What's up, YouTubers? So I got a quick video for you guys today. In a previous video, I had noticed that these two rods, which are 6010 and 6011, both Hobart rods, 332, I thought it was kind of interesting that despite this being called 6010, it pretty much looks identical to 6011. And even more interesting was that if you look at the box, it actually says AC or DC electrode positive. Well, the interesting thing about that is, is that and this is just one comparison here. AC only generally works with 6011. 6010 is not known to run on AC. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe these two rods are the same because every 6010 I've ever used would not run on AC. The arc would cut out. So today's video, we're going to actually test that. And I'm going to set up my Miller Dynasty to run AC. And we'll see what happens, if it will run it or won't. So let's get into it. So normal 6010 that I'm used to is either the gray rod, which is like the 5P plus Lincoln cells, or the red rod, which is commonly known as a 5P. All of these, both of these are 6010s, but they run a little bit different. The red rod tends to freeze a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive of an arc. Well, these Hobart 6010s right here, these have a different flux coating, obviously. Now, these rods are eighth inch, the red and the gray, and this is smaller. But you can see the flux looks different. And you tend to only find these 6010s that look like this that I've found, at least any of them that I have, are only Hobarts. And these I get at, uh, or I bought them at Tractor Supply Co. like, I don't know, two years ago. So I have my machine set for AC polarity. I'm running it at 60 hertz. Now, my machine may run this on AC and maybe an old Tombstone or uh, Thunderbolt Miller welder might still not run these because the AC on a, on a Dynasty is a little bit different, I have a feeling, than those. But at least it's a good sign that if it does run on AC on my machine, it probably would. But who knows on yours if you got an older transformer welder. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll start with 6011 and verify that that runs on AC. I've just got a piece of scrap here. I'm going to run a couple. I'll do two welds with the 6011, and we'll try the 6010 on AC and see what happens. All right, here's 6011. That seemed to run fine, no problems. I'll let that cool for a second, do another test weld with it. You're going to notice that my machine's AC sounds a lot different than your older transformer machines. And that's because it's, well, it does have a transformer in it, but the way that it's creating the AC uh, waveform is a little different. So the sound of it is definitely different. And the interesting thing is the machine doesn't buzz. Like that's why they called them old Tombstones buzz boxes. Well, the buzz you hear is all from the arc itself. The welder is dead silent, as you can hear right now, not even the fan kicked on. So pretty interesting. Yeah, so that ran no problem as expected with 6011. In case you guys were wondering, those old transformer machines, that buzzing sound like I was talking about, that actually comes from the transformer 
a transformer core is all laminated steel or some type of material and it's like sheets of it well there's they're not really connected they might be like glued together or something or bolted together but they vibrate with the ac waveform and that's what creates that buzzing sound pretty interesting all right, well, we got the 6010. Let's see if this will run on AC. We'll find out pretty quick if the arc will stay lit or keep going out. All right, well, that did stay lit on AC, so that's pretty interesting. The puddles look a lot different to me. It's hard to describe it. Um, th this 6010 seems to be much, much harsher, but the puddle seems almost as fluid. It doesn't freeze very fast, at least on AC this doesn't. The spatter seem to be excessive though. Like, don't get me wrong, 6010 has a fair amount of spatter to begin with, but this just seemed excessive, like there was a lot coming out, especially a lot more than the 6011. All right, let's run another pass, see what we get. Yeah, I would say I'm not too big of a fan of how that runs. It runs, but from my perspective, it just seems to be blowing more metal out of the molten pool than it's actually depositing. It's kind of an odd look. The second pass seemed to run a lot different. The first one, and maybe it's because the plate's a little bit heat soaked. That could be. Ooh, a little hot. But it, the spatter was just, it was blowing stuff out of there. Now 6011, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more humped up, partially because the plate was cold, but also 6011 to me generally takes 10 to 15 amps over 6010 to get a decent wetted out weld. So let me go get a wire wheel on a grinder and clean this all off and we'll look at it. So here we go. This was 6011, 6011, 6010, 6010. Now I think my travel speed was a little bit too fast on this, see how neck down this is. But in the same token, the amount of spatter that was coming out of here, it was almost like arc blow, but controlled arc blow. Now you don't really generally get arc blow on AC, but this thing was just tossing spatter out. It was welding very poorly, so who knows why. But I can tell you I don't like the way that this runs on AC, however it will stay running. Most 6010s, and I'm going to actually try this guy that's in my hand, and we're going to see if that'll run. But uh, so far, the 6011 looks pretty good about what's to be expected, and 6010 on AC, the, those particular rods not a fan of. I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, it does run, so I guess there's that. So what I'm going to do is up my machine, and we're going to try and run this, which is not known as an AC-capable rod. If this will run, I have a feeling it's just my machine is able to keep the arc lit, and it still probably won't run on a tombstone welder, but we'll find out. All right, let's try the 5P6010. Now, I did step up to 8-inch rods. I don't have any of these in a smaller diameter. And let's see if these will work and stay lit on AC.
Hmm. Yeah, I remember trying these on a tombstone welder a long time ago, and they would not stay lit, so I'm thinking that it's just uh, my particular welder is able to keep the rod lit. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to try this red 5P rod as well and see if that'll stay lit. Pay attention to how much uh, spatter is coming out of there. I mean, there is a ton coming out of there. Yeah, that didn't seem to have a problem either. Interesting. I'm going to take a guess and just say it's my welder because I don't remember having any luck with either one of those back on a tombstone welder, but maybe my memory's wrong. I find it interesting though, the 5P Plus didn't really spatter that much and ran pretty decent. The red rod on AC is very much like this other Hobart one. I don't like the way it runs. It's just excessive spatter. The puddle looks weird. It's definitely not good. Well, let me clean this off and let's look. So here's our gray 5P Plus rod weld. Looks pretty good overall. I don't, I wouldn't say that it ran bad at all. I mean, I, I would say that I would actually consider running it that way, even though this rod honestly isn't supposed to be run on AC. Now the red rod, it seemed to make a narrower weld. And not only that, it just seemed to have a lot of spatter. And I did not like the way that that ran on AC versus DC. So the red rod ran very similar to what these are. The 5P Plus, I would say, is acceptable. But again, most of these don't specify AC use. The other thing is, is that just because my welder could run it, it's hard to say if a tombstone would. I don't recall them running these rods very well. The arc would go out. And that's something you got to consider is that my welder has no problem with a closed circuit voltage to keep it high enough to run a rod like this. Well, if your welder has fairly low uh, open circuit voltage, it, the arc may kick out on voltage alone and not because of the AC. So it's something to think of. I, I guess my thought of doing this video and I, my thought was basically that the Hobart would probably barely run on AC and none of the other ones would, but they all apparently run. It's just they don't really look that good other than this guy seems to run pretty good. So anyways, I guess that's the video. Not what I expected, but hey, that's the point of doing this stuff. I can learn something. And like I said, if a rod says it's supposed to run on a particular polarity, you probably should run it on that polarity. AC in general has less penetration than DC. So, you know, if you're using 6010, you're using it for the penetration. So you should be running it on DC EP and not AC. But yeah, anyways, with that said, thanks for sticking around. Until next time, guys.